Hi everyone. I'm going to start a brand new series now. There are these scholastic books called Branches Books. I'm not sure if they're all scholastic, but the Branches Books are short, easy chapter books. And I'm kind of obsessed with them right now. And I'm going to start out with, there's five books already made from the Magic School Bus series. And the first one is called Sink or Swim from the Magic School Bus Rides Again. And again, it's a Branches book. This one's by Judy Kashix. Sorry if I'm butchering her name there. And then we'll take a look at Miss Frizzle's class. If you have watched the Magic School Bus, it's a great TV show. And they also are based on a lot of books. So these are the members of Miss Frizzle's class. And this book has 10 chapters. Chapter 1, Snow Day, No Way. It was a snowy day at Walkerville Elementary. That meant snowball fights. Incoming, screamed Jyoti. Snowball after snowball spit out from her state-of-the-art snowball machine. You got me, Ralphie cried as he fell toward the snow. Arnold huddled by the door. He counted 900 hours, 6 minutes, and 6 seconds until spring. For the other 7 kids in Ms. Frizzle's class, a snowy schoolyard was a flurry of fun. But for Arnold, it meant chattering teeth, cold, wet socks, and his usual countdown to spring. He kept counting. 900 hours. Arnold was so busy with his countdown that he didn't notice a tiny green lizard crawling up to the Walkerville Elementary roof. It was Liz, the classroom lizard. Five seconds, Arnold sighed. Liz flopped on her belly and slid across the roof, knocking a pile of snow onto Arnold. He looked like a human snowman. Glah, Arnold groaned. Just then the bell rang. Arnold's, Arnold's friends headed inside to their classroom. He followed behind them, moving like a frozen robot. What's with you, Arnold? Wanda asked. Avalanche, Arnold said through chattering teeth, in under der pants. You don't like winter, do you, Arnold? Wanda asked. I raided somewhere in between blue cheese and paper cuts, he said. Oh, Arn, Wanda said. You should just do what Ms. Frizzle says. Take the rest of it and make the best of it. Just like I'm going to make the best of today's field trip. Ms. Fiona Frizzle was full of sayings and surprises. Her biggest surprises were her field trips on her magic school bus. She had taken her students inside a volcano and to outer space. But today's field trip would be a little different. I can't believe Miss Frizzle is letting us pick where we go, Keisha said excitedly. She says we earned it for that time we almost got eaten, said Carlos. Which time, they all said together. Anyway, I already have a bunch of ideas for where we could go, Wanda said. She pulled a huge scrapbook from her bag and thump. She placed it on a desk. Uh-oh, Ralphie groaned. Is that your giant book of stuff that needs saving? Not stuff, Ralphie, Wanda said. Species. Species. It means a group of closely related animals, says, said Dorothy Ann. She was an excellent researcher and liked to share facts and information with the rest of the class. Wanda flipped to a page and announced, here's a great idea. Let's go to the frozen Arctic and save... The Aleutian Shield Fern. Keisha wrinkled her brow. What's a shield fern, she asked. Arctic, Arnold cried. That sounds cold. Seriously, Wanda, Ralphie said. We get to pick where we go, and you want to go somewhere cold? It's sweet of you to want to help these creatures, Keisha said, but how about we save ourselves from freezing? I'm thinking, Hawaii, a voice called out. The kids whirled around to see Ms. Frizzle, everyone shouted. Ms. Frizzle <clears throat> hula danced into the classroom. Liz strummed a lizard-sized ukulele as the teacher threw colorf colorful flower necklaces called lays around her students' necks and said, not that I'd ever want to influence your decision, kids, but what if just this once our field trip was more of a tropical vacation? The kids went wild. A warm weather vacation was exactly what they all needed. 
Well, all of them except Wanda. What about the poor fern? Wanda asked, holding up a picture. But nobody heard Wanda. Her classmates were already busy talking about surfing waves and drinking coconut smoothies. Well, even if we are going on a tropical vacation, I'm going to save something, thought Wanda. I just have to figure out what. Chapter 2. Motion to Ocean Sunglasses and sunscreen, everyone, Ms. Frizzle told the kids as she boarded the bus. That goes for you, too, bus. Ms. Frizzle's magic school bus was very special. The bus could transform into anything Ms. Frizzle needed. It had a mesmer glober, a shrinker scope, the latest information technology, and even a pair of cool new shades. Ms. Frizzle students hopped aboard the bus. For once, they were ready for this field trip. Bus, Ms. Frizzle called out, do your stuff. The bus whirled and twirled until it was in the middle of the Pacific Ocean on the island of Nihoa. Poof! Remember class, Miss Frizzle said, you're still in school, so we need to work on the three R's, resting, relaxation, and riding the waves. The students ran toward the ocean. Jyoti rode the waves on her propeller-powered boogie board. Dorothy Ann rested on her raft, and Arnold swam in the ocean with a pair of puffy water wings. Wanda snorkeled in the shallows and looked for underwater species. A tiny blue and yellow striped fish was splashing around. What a cute little fish, Wanda said. But what is she doing all by herself, she wondered. Wanda stood up and pressed a button on the side of her mask to talk to Dorothy Ann. She always had all the answers. Hey, Dorothy Ann, Wanda said. There's a tiny blue and yellow striped fish near me. I'm going to send you a picture. Can you tell me what kind of fish it is? Wanda dunked below the water and pressed the button again. It sent an image of the fish to Dorothy Ann's tablet. Common name is Blue Striped Snapper of the family Luchendae and the genus Lejanus, Dorothy Ann reported. Thanks, Dorothy Ann, Wanda said. Then she dunked back underwater and the fish darted straight through her legs. You're cute, Blue Striped Snapper, Wanda said to the fish. I'm going to call you Becca Blue. Becca playfully poked at Wanda's toes. Hey, that tickles, Wanda giggled. How can such a tiny little fish survive in such a big ocean? Her question was answered with a splash. Ms. Frizzle popped up out of the water. That's a deep question, Wanda, she said. When you think on it, what bubbles up? Hmm, Wanda said. Maybe there's nothing dangerous around to hurt her, so... Shark! Carlos shouted. Did he say shark? I guess there are some dangerous things around, thought Wanda. Scratch that, Wanda said, swimming, for the sh swimming fast toward the shore. She turned and called, Be right back, Becca. Wanda had decided what she was going to save. Becca. Chapter 3. In it to fin it. Wanda and Miss Frizzle ran out of the ocean toward the shore. Carlos and the others stood on the beach. They were all staring at Dorothy Ann's tablet. Carlos, did you see a shark? Wanda asked. Yeah, I saw it on the tablet, said Carlos. Check it out, Wanda, said Keisha, pointing to the tablet. They have so many cool animals on this island. Like sharks, Carlos said. I heard, said Wanda, who was still out of breath from running out of the ocean. Ooh, what an awesome creature, Miss Frizzle exclaimed. I'd love to meet him. Can we go find the shark, Carlos asked asked excitedly. I'll go with you. Me too, Wanda said. I need to see what is out there with Becca. The others stared at Wanda. Becca, who? Come on, everybody, Miss Frizzle called back. Let's find this shark the way the locals do. Do you mean the people that live here, Dorothy Ann asked as they boarded the bus? Not the people, Miss Frizzle said. You know, the locals down in the ocean. Bus, do your stuff. The bus shifted shape into a submarine and then splash. Ms. Frizzle sat at the controls as the bus dove into the ocean. She checked out the buttons on the control panel. There were tons of buttons, like a giraffe button, a dinosaur button, and a fish button. 
Miss Frizzle pressed the fish button. Goldfish crackers poured onto her head. Oops, wrong button, she called out. She tried a different one, and the students popped out of the bus, each in their own tiny submarines shaped like a fish. Look at my fishmobile go, Carlos shouted, doing loops. How do you steer this thing, asked Arnold. As my big sister always says, Miss Frizzle called through the bus's microphone, take chances, make mistakes, and get messy, the kids added. Take chances? I guess that means permission to push buttons, Wanda said with a smile. She tried a button. Dorsal fin activated, an electronic voice reported. Suddenly a dorsal fin spouted from the top of her fishmobile. It helped steady her submarine. Guys, Wanda said into her microphone, use the dorsal fin to keep from rolling over. My tummy thanks you, Wanda, said Tim, studying his fishmobile. Ralphie pushed a button. Tail fin activated, the electronic voice said. Ralphie zoomed forward with the help of a new fin at the back of his fishmobile. Hey, everybody, Ralph said into his mic. The tail fin moves you forward fast. Maybe a little too fast, he said. He headed straight for Dorothy Ann. She quickly pushed a different button. Pectoral fins activated, the electronic voice reported as fins shot out the front sides of Dorothy Ann's fishmobile. Use pectoral fins for steering, she told her classmates. Miss Frizzle smiled. Wow, it looks like things are going swimmingly. Woohoo! Joti cheered. I can swim like a fish. Or like a mermaid, Keisha piped in. This is amazing. I can move just like Becca. Wait up, Becca! Wanda called to the little fish in the distance. She was just about to power forward when Ralphie gulped. Um, guys, look! An enormous, scary, dark blob headed right toward them. What is that thing? Keisha asked. A giant squid? A killer whale? Carlos guessed. Whatever it is, Wanda said, it's coming straight for us. Ah, everyone shouted as the strange blob moved closer and closer. Chapter four, something fishy. Everybody run, I mean swim, Ralphie shouted as he spun his fishmobile around. The students pressed buttons as fast as they could to try to get out of the dark blob's path. But one student in Ms. Frizzle's class wasn't going anywhere. Listen up, huge, evil, scary thing, Wanda said, staring the creature down through her windshield. There is no way you're getting between me and Becca. The blob was closing in on Wanda. She shut her eyes and held her breath. When she opened her eyes, the dark blob had changed shape. Wanda was safe, and she was now inside a huge tunnel that went right through the middle of the blob. It turned out the big blob wasn't a giant squid or a killer whale. It wasn't even big. Wanda opened her eyes. No way. The blob was just a whole bunch of fish, yelled the others. Not a bunch of fish, Dorothy Ann said. A school. Ms. Frizzle leaned toward her mic. That's right, D.A., and it looks like this school of fish has been practicing cool underwater moves. I can't believe you guys were all afraid of a bunch of dinky little fish, Ralphie laughed. Yeah, Ralphie, I forgot how brave you are. So do you want to tackle that guy next? said Keisha. Everyone froze as a dark shadow swam up from the deep, dark bottom of the ocean. Ah, Ralphie screamed. Shark, they said together. Dorothy Ann called information out, of, out in gasps. Common name is Blacktip Reef Shark of the family Karchar Hinde and the genus. As quickly as the shark had appeared, it disappeared into the reef. Phew, Carlos sighed. I guess he had other fish to fry. That was close, Ralphie said. Time for us to get out of here. Class, Miss Frizzle called out. Shake a tail fin. The kids steered toward the bus, all except for Wanda. She was busy thinking about Becca. Wait, guys, we can't leave Becca. What about the shark? Guys? Guys! Wanda called out to her classmates, but they were already back inside the bus. Wanda sighed and headed for the bus, too.
Chapter 5, Deepwater Dig Back on the beach, Wanda told her friends all about Becca Blue, and she explained why she was worried about her new fishy friend. That's an interesting question, Joe T. said. How does something so small protect itself from something so huge? Not just huge, enormous, with big, sharp, pointy, scary, nar nar nar, Wanda said, chomping her teeth. Look, Carlos shouted, a shark's tooth. See how big it is, Wanda said. According to my research, Dorothy Ann said, turning to her tablet, sharks can have anywhere from five to 50 rows of teeth. 50 rows of teeth, asked Wanda, growing more and more worried about Becca Blue. Yes, replied Dorothy Ann. Also, some fish, fish hide in coral reefs to keep safe from predators. The reef acts kind of like a safe house with a tiny fish door. A safe house? A fish door? Wanda smiled. That's it! Jyoti, I need one super safe, super high-tech fish house for Becca to hide in, Wanda said. You're so great at building things. Can you build it? It might be tricky, Jyoti said. I will need to build a saltwater-resistant house with cutting-edge technology. So can you do it? Wanda asked again. Jyoti winked. What color? Wanda smiled. Jyoti gathered tools scrap materials, wire, electronics, hunks of coral, and seashells. Soon, Jyoti was finished. Drumroll, please, Jyoti said to Wanda. Here is my super high-tech underwater fish house with security system, alarms, and a video feed you can watch on your laptop. Jyoti hadn't just built a fish house. She built a fish mansion. It's perfect, Wanda exclaimed. If that big toothy shark gets anywhere near Becca, I'll know about it. Wanda swam out to sea and placed the house underwater. Becca zoomed inside. Hooray, Wanda cheered. She loves it. Hey. Becca zoomed out just as fast as she had zoomed in. Where are you going, Wanda asked. Becca headed back out into the open sea. Wanda's heart sank. The shark is still out there, she thought. This is not good, not good at all. Chapter 6. Sink or Swim Wanda turned to her classmates. It's a great big ocean out there, and Becca is one tiny fish, Wanda said. I'm not sure why she didn't stay inside the safe house we built, but we need to find her. I know she still needs our help. Who's with me? Wanda waited for a show of hands, but no one was paying attention to her. They were all watching Liz limbo on the beach. Becca needs our help, Wanda said again. The other students grooved to a tropical beat as Liz slithered underneath the limbo bar. I'm sure Becca's fine, Wanda, Keisha said. Plus, she might go back to her new house, Jyoti pointed out. And the coral reef is there. She needs it, added Dorothy Ann. Grab a coconut soda, Wanda, Ralphie said. It's time to have some fun. Arnold pointed to his beeping watch. And it's time to reapply our sunscreen, he said. Wanda tried to have fun. She cheered as Liz won the limbo contest by a tail but she couldn't stop thinking about Becca. I'll just have to find Becca all by myself, Wanda said as she walked toward the sea. Unless, Wanda walked over to her teacher. Miss Frizzle, can you help me find Becca Blue? Miss Frizzle nodded. Okay, she said, let's see what we can do. Wanda smiled. Liz, please keep an eye on the class, Miss Frizzle called. We've got a fish to find. Miss Frizzle and Wanda hurried aboard the bus. It rolled straight to the shoreline, then dove deep down into the ocean. Wanda looked out a window to search the water. There were so many fish in the sea. How would she ever find Becca? Suddenly, Wanda spotted a tiny yellow and blue striped snapper darting around the underwater rocks. Becca Blue! There she is, Miss Frizzle, Wanda called. Wanda climbed into her fishmobile. Don't worry, Becca, she called. Here I come. Wanda zoomed over to Becca. I missed you, light little scaly buddy. Becca hovered above the seaweed. Then she swam away again. Hey, wait up, Wanda called. Wanda chased after her friend. Just as she caught up, Becca darted off in a different direction. Becca is a tough fish to follow, Wanda thought. I never know where she is going to go next. Just then, a bright blue button on Wanda's control panel began to blink. What's that, Wanda wondered. There was only one way to find out. She gave the button a tap and swimmer sense activated, an electronic voice reported. 
Swimmer what, Wanda wondered. A balloon lit up inside Wanda's fishmobile. Wanda held on tight as her fishmobile made a sharp drop. Then it rose up until it steadied itself in the water. Now at optimum swimming depth, the voice reported. Whoa, Wanda exclaimed. That balloon thing, you must control how deep I am. Wanda saw a picture of her fishmobile on her monitor. Lines were lighting up on each side from gills to tail. The lines on my fishmobile seem to be reacting to something in the water around me, Wanda said. Only why? Friendly fish now approaching, said the electronic voice. The fish was Becca. She was swimming right next to Wanda. Oh, that's why those lines lit up. Hi, Becca, Wanda called. The electronic voice spoke again. Fish link now engaged. Wanda's fishmobile began to swim up and down with Becca. Wherever Becca went, Wanda went too. They were completely in sync. Cool. Ms. Frizzle, Wanda called into her microphone. I'm actually synced up to Becca. That line on Becca's side does that too. You got it, Wanda, Ms. Frizzle replied. You're expert synchronized swimmers. Wanda was having so much fun that she almost missed the huge dark shadow coming up from below. Uh-oh, said Wanda. Maybe that's just another school of fish. As the dark shape got closer, Wanda realized it could only be one thing. It wasn't hundreds of tiny fish swimming together. It was the shark, Wanda shouted. Chapter 7. Snap to it. Is there a problem, Wanda? Miss Frizzle's voice asked over the microphone. Are you in trouble? Nothing I can't handle, said Wanda. I'll distract the shark to turn it away from Becca. Then I'll hide while Becca escapes. Okay, said Ms. Frizzle. Be careful. Wanda yanked the joystick, pushing the fishmobile forward. Becca swam forward, too, in the same direction as Wanda. No, Becca, Wanda said, you go the other way. But Becca kept following Wanda's fishmobile. Becca, swim! Suddenly, Wanda realized the problem. The fish link was still on. She pushed the blinking button again and the depth meter on her fishmobile went dark. The line faded from its side. Fish link disengaged, the electronic voice reported. Now go, Becca, go, shouted Wanda. While Becca swam off, Wanda headed for a hiding place under some rocks. She expected the shark to follow her, but instead it followed Becca. Oh no, Wanda groaned. Just then, an enormous group of blue and yellow stripes, stripers appeared. They looked just like Becca. Those must be her school friends, Wanda said. All together, they look like one huge creature. The giant shimmering ball of fish split in two. The shark was confused. It swam after one half of the group first. Then it tried to chase the other. Nice one, Wanda laughed. Now he doesn't know what to chase. The shark dove toward the middle of one of the schools. Hundreds of fish shot off in all different directions. Find your lunch somewhere else, shouted Wanda. But the shark tried again. This time it was headed directly for Wanda. Chapter 8, Shark Bait. Ms. Frizzle decided Wanda needed some help. She called the class on her tablet. Okay, class, listen up, Ms. Frizzle told them. It's time to go to school. School? asked Ralphie. I thought we were not saying the S word today. An image flashed on Dorothy Ann's screen. The shark was closing in on Wanda's fishmobile. Keisha didn't waste one second. She raced toward the ocean. We have to help Wanda, she shouted. Come on, everybody. Is that the shark? Carlos said. Cool. But Wanda's about to be shark chow, Jyoti said. Less cool, Carlos sighed. We should not have stayed home today, said Arnold to Liz as he ran toward the bus. Wanda needs our help. Time for Operation Save Wanda, the way the locals do it, said Ms. Frizzle. The bus turned into a submarine and carried the class under the sea. The bus spit out the class's fishmobiles, but Wanda was nowhere to be found. Everyone looked and looked. Suddenly, Carlos spied a fishmobile poking up from behind a rock. Wanda, he called. Wanda spotted Carlos, too. He was nearby in his fishmobile, and he was not alone. Keisha, Tim, Jyoti, Dor Dorothy Ann, Ralphie, and Arnold were there, too. 
Are you okay, Wanda? Keisha asked. I thought you were all too busy to help Becca, Wanda said. But we care about you, Tim said. We're here for you, Wanda, Dorothy Ann said. You need help, don't you? Well, yes, so much, Wanda admitted. Did you guys see the shark? I can't get away from this rock without going snout to snout with old Narnar face. You need some fish style help, Tim told Wanda, from your own school, us. Stay here, Keisha said to Wanda. We'll try to distract the shark. Keisha drove her fishmobile past the shark. The shark turned to follow Keisha, and Wanda knew it was her only chance. Here goes nothing, Wanda thought. She moved out from behind the rock and made a swim for it. The shark was too fast. He headed for Wanda, but found Arnold instead. Yipes, don't eat me, Arnold yelled from his fishmobile. I taste like SPF 100. You won't like it. Arnold yanked his joystick. His fishmobile flipped upside down. Then it shot backward out of the shark's way. The shark looked around for someone new. Dorothy Ann. Uh-oh, she gulped. According to my research, I'm toast. Wanda zoomed by in her fishmobile. Hey, look over here, shark, she shouted. The shark ditched Dorothy Ann to chase Wanda. Then it went after Carlos. We can't do this all day, said Carlos. Ms. Frizzle shouted, as my rock and roll relative great, great Auntie Palooza used to say, maybe it's time to get your acts together. Together, Wanda thought, that's it. Wanda smiled at the magic word. She leaned toward her mic and began to shout, fish link, fish link. What, did you sneeze, Ralphie asked. Wanda waved her arm wildly over the control panel. No, hit the fish link button now. It's the blinking blue button right in front of you, she exclaimed. Wanda pressed the blue button. The depth meter lit up and the lines at the side of the fishmobile flashed. Got it, said Jyoti, po pushing the button. Fish link now engaged, the electronic voice reported. The lines on the sides of Jyoti's fishmobile lit up as she fell into perfect synchronization with Wanda. The rest of the class hit their blue buttons. Follow me, everyone, Wanda declared. The school of fishmobiles moved through the water. They moved up, they moved down, and they moved side to side together. It's like we all share one great big giant fish brain, Carlos pointed out. Keisha laughed. That would be gross if it weren't so awesome. The class was outsmarting the shark with every move. As my older sister might say, Ms. Frizzle exclaimed, Woo-hoo! But they weren't safe yet. They might have fooled the shark for a minute, but he was smart. They had to get out of there fast. Let's show this guy what scary is all about, Wanda said. Remember how we got scared by the giant blob? When all those little fish look like one big fish? Totally, they all shouted. It's blob building time, Wanda said. The students began to form one giant blob of fishmobiles. Together, they were even bigger than the shark. The school of fishmobiles headed straight for the shark. The giant blob looked so big and powerful that the shark didn't know what to do. He turned the other way, but the school chased him. You're not getting away that easy, said Carlos. Finally, the shark disappeared into the deep, dark sea. See you later, said Wanda. We scared the shark. We did it, Keisha cheered. Together, Wanda added. The fishmobiles headed toward the bus. Students, it's time for another school. Our own, called Ms. Frizzle. Bus, do your stuff. Chapter 10, Aloha, Walkerville. Ms. Frizzle's students said hello, aloha to sunny Hawaii and aloha to a cold, snowy Walkerville. In Hawaii, aloha means hello and goodbye. Ms. Frizzle sang in Hawaiian as she hung a Hawaii poster in the classroom. Huh? Arnold yelled. What does that mean? School's out for the rest of our lives? Joked Ralphie. No, Ralphie. I was just singing in Hawaiian that today's field trip was incredible, Ms. Frizzle explained. It was pretty amazing, Tim agreed. Busting out those slick fish moves and schooling that shark, Carlos said. I can't believe I went to all that trouble to save Becca when she already had all the help she needed, Wanda said. That is one fish with some pretty great friends, Jyoti said. Wanda smiled at her classmates. Yeah, she said, I know the feeling. 
Arnold sighed. I just wish I knew why we had to come back from Hawaii so soon. Well, I do try to wrap up field trips before three o'clock, said Ms. Brizzle. Just this once, Arnold pleaded, I wish that trip had lasted until summer o'clock. The class laughed. Then they looked out the window at the freezing piles of snow and ice. Well, since nobody wants to go outside in the cold, said Wanda, grabbing her giant scrapbook, who wants to hear about the poor Aleutian shield fern? I could go on for hours. But the classroom door slammed before Wanda finished her sentence. Everyone, even Arnold, had decided to brave the outdoors. Look at them, playing together, said Miss Frizzle as she looked out the window. Remind you of anything, Wanda? Wanda pressed a pretend button. Boop, she joked, heading for the door. Yep, Kid Link now engaged. That is the end of our story today. Um, this is the first book in the Magic School Bus Rides Again series for, for the branches books, Sink or Swim. And like I said at the start of this, I'm pretty obsessed with these branches books, so you're probably going to hear a lot more of them from me. Have a good night.